Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP discovers that her coworker kidnapped a child. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash legal advice. So my coworker Mary is kind of a weirdo. She and her husband are the type of people who have a ton of adopted kids, eight so far, and are super religious. To each his own. Mary enjoys telling everyone at work her business, so when she decided to adopt a kid from Ukraine, everyone heard about it. She adopted an older kid because she claims that it's easier for her and her husband. This was two years ago. Mary has asked me to babysit her boy a couple of times. I'll call him Tony. And it's never been a problem because I like kids. I didn't see any glaring problems despite Mary's constant dramatics about how awful the kid was, and he seemed to like being over. It's just me and my boyfriend at my place, and our place is small but clean and really well kept. Mary's house is disgusting, for lack of a better word. Mary would harp constantly about how much Tony liked it at our house, but I just chalked it up to the kid having a good time. Lately, at work, Mary has been talking to anyone who will listen about how awful Tony is and how horrible he is to the other kids, and how she's going to get rid of him. She sent out a freaking mass email to everyone in our department asking if someone wanted to take her kid from her. Yo, what? She calls it rehoming and says that it's okay. I logged onto Facebook today and the same story. She has pictures of Tony posted on her timeline advertising him for readoption and to contact her if interested? Yo, what on earth? Is this legal? I haven't replied to her email yet and I haven't commented on her post, but I'm this close to ripping into her for what she's doing. She's crossed the line from being weird into full-blown psycho. Should I call CPS? I called the cops just now, but they sounded completely confused as to what to do. They agreed to do a welfare check. Her Facebook post is still up. Is this really legal? I don't know much about adoption, and a quick search for rehoming gets me mostly results about animals. Any advice? Wow, this story is already wild. This can't be legal. This, there's no way this is legal. It's <laughs> kid for sale. <laughs> is that what this story is? Child for sale? DM me with your best offer. Don't lowball. I know what I got here. Okay. And then OP posted an update. So real quick, OP goes on to explain that on his first post, Reddit absolutely rallied around this post and he got DMs from local officials, state officials, people in Ukraine who understood Ukrainian law, how to contact the Ukrainian embassy, people who spoke Russian, people who spoke Ukrainian. So he got a lot of advice about official people to contact and, you know, props to Reddit. They really showed up to help OP on this one. I talked with the cops about the situation and honestly, they were just as confused as I was. The person I talked to on the phone was just as stumped as I was, but he agreed that, at minimum, they had to do a welfare check. I've had experiences with welfare checks before, and I had a nagging feeling that something just wouldn't go right. And then, someone on Reddit PM'd me the priority line for my state Child Protective Services hotline. I got someone on the phone right away, and as soon as I mentioned that trafficking could be going on and that she was advertising the kid on Facebook, they acted with a quickness. I gave them all the information I had on Mary and Tony and all the information I had from Mary about Tony's adoption. The person I spoke to right away said that she suspected that Tony's adoption might not even be legal in the first place. I was floored! I emailed all the screenshots I had to the person I spoke with and asked for a follow-up if that was at all possible. I said that me and my boyfriend were willing to take Tony on a temporary basis if necessary, but the Child Protective Services representative said that most likely that wasn't possible. Then, the waiting game began. Last night was probably the most stressful night that I've ever had. At one point, it was hell. I was ready to drive out to Mary's house myself, but my boyfriend stopped me. It was tough. The cops followed up with us at approximately 2 a.m. Note that, at this point, I hadn't heard from CPS. The officer I spoke with was very cautious and limited in what he said, but he told me that CPS arrived at the home shortly after he did. In not so many words, the cop implied that Mary had been talking to someone about meeting Tony the very next day and that CPS's suspicions were confirmed. That Tony's adoption wasn't even legal. Tony was rehomed to Mary and her husband from another state where placement needs to be approved by a judge. He didn't elaborate further, except to say that other issues came to light and all the kids were removed from the home for their own safety by CPS. He didn't say how long the cops and CPS were there, but he did say that it was a long time. 
He asked me to drop off all emails and printouts at the station, and I agreed. My boyfriend and I wanted to make doubly sure that all our bases were checked. So, I called our local FBI office, who said they lacked jurisdiction in the matter, but they would be writing up a complaint and referring the issue to the State Department. Jeez, this story. Oh my god. We called the Ukrainian embassy and made a detailed complaint, and I included the contact information I had for the officer from the department. I'm sorry, this story is wild. I don't mean to be laughing. Okay, okay. The shit really hit the fan when I went into work to print out the email. Our company's pretty small, and the owner, Angie, had gotten wind of Mary's email. And Angie was furious. She was waiting at Mary's desk to see if she would show up for work. My friend reported that Angie waited from 7.15 to 9.30 a.m. <laughs> and that Mary came to work with a sob story about how her kids were being unfairly taken away. Mary wanted time off from work to clear my name and devote myself to reclaiming my family from this misunderstanding. I wasn't there to witness this, but Angie, who has six kids herself, apparently ripped Mary a new asshole. Mary has been fired, and rumor has it that Angie may or may not allow her to claim unemployment. My head is honestly still spinning from everything that's happened. The past 24 hours have been insanity! I'm so grateful that the system worked as quickly as it did. I only hope that it works out as a long-term solution to this problem and that Mary doesn't get to reclaim her kids. My heart is breaking for Tony and the other kids right now. I don't know what the F was happening in Mary's house that made CPS remove all of them that night, but I'm gonna sleep better knowing that they aren't going to be with that psycho Mary and her husband, at least for a while. What the future holds for Tony and the other kids makes me sick, but I'm gonna wish for the best. I need a drink. Yo, this story is nuts. This woman illegally acquired a child. Oh my god, this woman, this woman, man, this sentence sounds so weird to say. This woman illegally acquired a child and then talked about that child to everyone that she knew, <laughs> including sending out a company-wide email? How do I say this? I have never acquired a child <laughs> illegally. I've never illegally acquired a minor. So, you know, I would assume, having never been in that situation, I would think that if I illegally acquired a child, I wouldn't go around telling people about that child. Because isn't that, you know, like a, like a mega felony, I think is the technical term? A super extra mega plus felony? It's a double felony. Because she illegally acquired the child and then was illegally giving away the child. Like, what's her vetting process? Yo, you guys. You guys. You think that money changed hands here? You think that someone on Facebook reached out to Mary and was like, Yeah, I'll take the kid off your hands. I'll give you, eh, $1,000 for your trouble. Do you think that Mary tried to sell Tony? This is pure speculation. You know, I, I don't have any evidence for this. I'm just wondering about the world of the world of, of child trading. This is bizarre. Yo, down in the comments, people are posting news stories that shows you, yes, this story is as bad as it sounds. This is from a story... When a Liberian girl proved too much for her parents, they advertised her online and gave her to a couple they've never met. Days later, she goes missing. Oh man, listen to this from an article. I'm going to quote an ad that was written for one of these rehoming websites. Born in October of 2000, this handsome boy, Rick, was placed from India a year ago and is obedient and eager to please. This is, um, disgusting. This is repulsive. Man, when I imagine, like, child kidnappers, child abductors, I imagine some creepy guy in a white paneled van hanging out in the back alley of, like, a Walmart. Not so someone going to Facebook, willing to buy one child, please. Oh, man. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, you guys. Sometimes when I get stressed out or overwhelmed, I laugh. So I'm not trying to say this is funny. I'm just blown away by the absurdity of this story. This woman broke so many laws and told everyone about it. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash system admin. The post title was, What asinine work from home policy has your employer come up with? Today, mine came up with the brilliant idea that if you're not at the location where your paycheck is addressed, you're AWOL because you're not home. This is gonna suck for those single folks who periodically spend time over at their significant other's place or for couples who have more than one home. I'm not really sure how they plan to enforce this, unless they're gonna send the work from home police over to check your house to see if you're actually there when you're logged in. And then, OP posted an update. 
Today, I found out why this policy was enacted. A few weeks ago in a meeting with HR, the HR rep made a comment about the policy being enacted because people weren't working at their houses but were taking unapproved vacations and working while on vacation. After digging around a little with my friend high up in central IT admin, it seems that a senior administration official who never uses a computer was participating in a Zoom meeting. In that Zoom meeting, one of the participants was apparently at the beach participating in the meeting remotely. Except she wasn't. She had her Zoom background set to the tropic theme with palm trees and the ocean in the background. This moron thought that she was participating remotely from like Aruba or something. He wanted, to, <laughs> he wanted to bring her into HR and disciplinary charges, but didn't know her name because Zoom has pretty pictures of you and he didn't get her name. Based on that, the wheel started grinding, and we have a new policy where everyone has to work at home when they work from home, or you're considered AWOL. When someone finally realized what happened and brought it to his attention, senior IT people got involved. They had to explain the Zoom background to him. Rather than admitting his mistake, he doubled down with how the policy is necessary and became even more invested in making it a reality, rather than admitting his mistake and looking like a complete moron. No, I am not kidding you. This is not urban legend territory. I laugh if it weren't so stupid. You know guys, I've got some bad news for you. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you may be disappointed to learn that Actually, I'm not in outer space right now. Look, look, I know that I've got a swirling galaxy background on all my videos, but I don't have that there because I'm actually floating in orbit. I have that there because it's dark and kind of pretty and a dark background is easier to read on. So I know that I'm blowing some of your minds right now and maybe you feel lied to, but that's just the truth. I have to come clean. I'm not in outer space right now. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash relationship advice. I'm a 29 year old woman and basically four years ago I was supposed to be getting married to my fiance at the time, Jay. Everything was going perfect. I was in my dress, had my makeup on and taking pictures with my bridesmaids. I was pretty much ready to walk down the aisle when Jay's best man pulled me to the side and said that Jay was gone. He had gotten into a car and left and no one was able to get a hold of him. I came home to our apartment and all of his stuff was gone. He's been pretty much a ghost ever since he left me, and I had to force myself to move on. I ended up going on our honeymoon with my best friend, which was the best decision ever. And then I put myself in therapy to heal the horrible trust issues I now have. I haven't heard from him once, until today. I guess he got back in contact with an old mutual friend who gave him my number. Jay texted me and said that he wants to meet up again and apologize. He says that he has a lot to explain to me about what happened that day. I'm torn. I swore that Jay was going to be a dead memory, but my curiosity and desire to get closure with him is pestering me. My current boyfriend supports me in whatever I decide, and I feel out of respect for him and how wonderful he's been, I should ghost Jay. I'm very confused. I never expected to hear from Jay again, and I have no idea what to do. Please help. Then, two months later, OP posted an update. This all happened two weeks ago. Against the advice of most people, I did meet up with Jay. And, as a lot of you have said, it did not add any value to my life. Also, it was part of a 12-step program and he was making amends. We met up at a park and my boyfriend came with me. He sat off to the side while Jay and I talked. I actually feel stupider after meeting with him. There were a lot of things in our relationship that would have had me out the door if I paid more attention and if he wasn't such a great liar. Basically, for the last year of our relationship, he was doing drugs and cheating on me. He had been struggling with his sexuality for years, and it's not surprising that it ended up this way now knowing the truth. His family is incredibly homophobic, and they're horrible people. I wanted nothing to do with them when we were together, but he insisted on them being around just for the big life events, like our wedding. The drugs were something to get him through the day and act like he was in love with me when he was actually in love with someone else. He had met his boyfriend at work and I'd actually met him a few times when I'd drop him off for lunch. When our wedding approached, his boyfriend said that he had to choose and Jay chose him. 
So he packed up his bags and pretended everything was great until his boyfriend picked him up and they moved two towns over. I asked him if he was still with his boyfriend and he said no. He thought that he could quit the drugs once he was free of his family and lying, but he couldn't. His boyfriend found out and left him. He kept going. He just kept using, getting high and hooking up with random guys. One of his regular hookups ended up overdosing while they were asleep in the same bed and died and he realized he had to get sober. He apologized for not being honest with me and leading me on like he did. He wished that he could have gone back and be truthful because out of everyone, I would have been the most accepting of him being gay. He said that he missed me after he left even though he didn't love me romantically. I was his best friend. It was a lot to take in. I told him that while I'm glad he's okay and is doing better, I'd prefer to us not have any contact moving forward, but I do forgive him. He said that he understood and he was only in town for a few more days and he'd be gone again for good. I'll admit, when I got home, I cried. My boyfriend held me and ordered me my favorite takeout. He's really been the best and he didn't pressure me to talk about anything until I was ready. So if I got anything out of the worst day of my life, at least it led me to who I'm with now. OP, I think it's a good idea to cut your ex out of your life. I mean, yeah, I get that he was struggling with some really heavy personal issues, but still, cheating is cheating, lying is lying, and he led you on all the way to the day of the wedding. Why couldn't he have broken up with you months before that? The way that he used you and toyed with your life was awful. That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.